so good morning everyone uh, welcome to the class on investment management and in today class uh, we'll discuss debt instrument so uh, we have discussed about equity instrument we have talked about ordinary share uh, we have talked about preference shares till now so i hope uh, you have developed an idea about that whenever a company whenever a company looking for the fund through equity how they can raise the fund in the market when we talk about a uh, raising fund uh, through debt instrument whenever we talk about a uh, raising fund uh, through debt instrument debt instrument is all about a uh, borrowing money from the market with an obligation to pay back in the future so whenever a company uh, whenever a company borrows money uh, through debt instrument uh, they borrow money uh, with an obligation that they will pay back in the future in the case of debt instrument the ownership is never transferred okay so please remember this the ownership is never transferred in the case of debt instrument so only thing in the case of debt instruments you have the compulsion of payment of of interest so whenever a person whenever a company they borrow money in, in, in the case of debt instrument they have the commitment uh, to pay back the money uh, with interest okay so uh, when you talk about uh, when we talk about a debt instrument debt instrument can be either it can be amortizing debt instrument they can be amortizing debt instrument can be amortizing debt instrument or it can be non amortizing debt instrument or it can be non amortizing it can be amortizing or it can be non amortizing so when we talk about amortizing what do you mean amortizing amortizing debt instrument means uh, in the case of amortizing debt instrument uh, you will pay principal uh, in the case of amortizing debt instrument what do you mean by amortizing debt instrument it means uh, you will pay a part of principal every time when you make a payment whenever we make a payment in the case of debt instrument whenever we make a payment we pay interest plus a part of principal we pay interest plus a part of principal okay so we pay interest and part of a principal so that so that on maturity so that on maturity so that on maturity the complete so that on maturity the current complete principal payment is done so that on maturity complete principal payment is done so that on maturity complete principal payment is done that is called as amortizing debt instrument okay like you remember no for example whenever we take any loan like house loan or home loan or education loan whatever we talk about whenever we talk about any kind of loan product uh, we pay emi uh, we pay emi emi stand for equated monthly installment the emi what we pay uh, in the case of emi we pay uh, in the case of emi we pay principal certain part of principal plus interest so that once the once the once the tenure of the emi is done uh, our loan would be complete relief so i hope you are getting that so that is called amortizing debt instrument okay so what what is non amortizing debt instrument non amortizing debt instrument basically means non amortizing debt instrument means that we pay only the only the payment of interest only the payment of interest only the payment of interest is done only the payment of interest is done at the interval of every time period at every time period every time period so when we talk about amortizing debt instrument in the case of amortizing debt instrument only the payment of interest is done at every time period okay the principal is paid principal is paid principal is paid on maturity principal is paid on maturity this is called as this is called as non amortizing debt instrument so when we talk about non amortizing debt instrument in the case of non amortizing debt instrument uh, when we talk about non amortizing debt instrument uh, in the case of non amortizing debt instrument principal is paid only on the maturity only the only the only the part of the only the only the part which is called as interest is paid after every regular interval of time that is called non amortizing debt instrument. okay when we talk about amortizing debt instrument when we talk about amortizing debt instrument 
Yeah, in the case of amortizing debt instrument, uh, what we do, uh, we pay, uh, uh, in the case of amortizing debt instrument, what we do, uh, we pay uh, interest plus a certain part of principal. Okay, so that we call it EMI. You, you heard of EMI. And then uh, if you notice, whenever you take loan in the case of EMI, once your EMI is done, your everything will be done. Okay, so remember how to calculate EMI. So the formula for that is loan is equal to loan is equal to your installment loan is equal to your installment divided by R percent loan is equal to installment divided by R percent one plus R percent to the power T minus one divided by one plus R percent to the power T. So with, with this formula, you can calculate your installment. Okay, so this is the way how you should do. So whenever you pay installments, what you do, you pay, uh, you pay uh, interest plus a certain part of the principal. You remember, no, whenever you take any kind of loan from bank, so th that is the way how it happens. Those are called amortizing debt instruments. But whenever we talk about, no, uh, whenever we talk about, uh, whenever we are talking about any kind of bond products, like financial product, financial debt instrument. Example for non-amortizing debt instruments are basically financial uh, debt products, financial debt products. So whenever we talk about any kind of financial uh, debt products, so whenever uh, we, we make the payment, uh, whenever we work on financial debt products, so there, uh, there we follow basically, there we follow basically non-amortizing debt instrument. Okay, so there, uh, like suppose for example for example for example if i give you an example for example uh, for an example uh, suppose an investor for example suppose an investor suppose an investor suppose an investor is considering suppose an investor is considering suppose an investor is considering the purchase of the purchase of five year purchase of five year thousand rupees thousand rupees par value bond thousand rupees par value bond thousand rupees par value bond bearing bearing a nominal rate of bearing a nominal rate of return of bearing a nominal rate of return of bearing a nominal rate of return of 7% per annum 7% per annum the investor required rate of return the investor required rate of return investor required rate of return is 8% investor required rate of return is 8% okay so question is that what should what should what should what should an investor what should an investor willing to willing to pay pay to pay for the bond if it mature at par if it mature if it matures at par this is the question everyone read this question so for an example of non amortizing debt instrument so whenever uh, we talk about non-amortizing debt instrument, in the case of a non-amortizing debt instrument, what we do, we make the payment of interest at the end of every time period. We make the payment of interest at the end of every time period. Then what we do, uh, then uh, and on maturity, then on maturity, uh, we pay the phase value. Then on maturity, we pay the phase value, whatever is committed to, to us, that is, and, and and in between what we do, we just pay the coupon or the interest. Interest, in the, the word interest 
in the case of debt instrument is reflected by the term called coupon the word interest we use another word for the interest that we call is coupon remember this Suppose an investor is considering the purchase of five-year, thousand uh, rupees par value bond bearing a nominal rate of return of seven percent per annum. The investor required rate of return, uh, so nominal rate of the investor bearing no one minute, bearing nominal rate of return, bearing a nominal rate of the investor required rate of return. Okay, so means this is the cost of debt. This is the cost of debt. This eight percent. Simply, this is suppose this is eight percent is the cost of debt. This eight percent is your cost of debt, or uh, that is also called as YTM. Eight percent is also called as cost of debt, or that is also called as YTM. Ill till maturity. That is also called as ill ill maturity. That is also called as ill till maturity. That is given to you as eight percent. Cost of debt or yield in maturity that is given to you eight percent. Okay, nominal rate of return. This is seven percent is what coupon rate. This is interest rate that is called seven percent is called coupon rate. Okay, and one thousand rupees par value bond. So, so what is the face value? Face value. What is the face value? Face value is thousand rupees. Okay, and then time year. What how many year maturity? Time period of this bond, the time period of this bond is five year. Okay, so investor will get a purchase of five year. Uh -huh. So what should what should investor be willing to pay for the bond? So means they are asking you the price. What is the what is the price of this bond? They are asking you the price. So like what is the price? Price is the sum total of of all the inflows what you are expecting from the bond that we called as the price. That we call as the price. Some total of all the inflows uh, you expect uh, to receive from the debt instrument uh, that we called uh, as the price of the bond. So understand uh, what happens uh, in the case of what happens in the case of non-amortizing debt instrument. Understand that part. What happens in the case of non non-amortizing debt instrument? Uh, so th in the case of non-amortizing debt instrument, there's a there's an issuer who is looking for the fund. And they are investors. So, in the case of non-amortizing debt instrument, what happens? There is an issuer who is looking for the fund, and they are investors who who want to invest in these 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 funds. The issuer is looking for the fund. So, so now the issuer suppose issuer is a company. Issuer is anyone who is looking for the fund. Now, issuer is someone who is looking from the fund from the market, and and because issuer is looking from the fund from the market, so what issuer Uh, would do issuer has two option issuer can either uh, raise money from the equity or the issuer can raise money in the form of debt if issuer uh, raise money in the form of equity then issuer has to give his his ownership to the other people means he has to make others the the owner of his company and the ownership what the issuer would give that would be for infinite time period what issuer can do instead of that issuer can can go to the debt instrument and issuers can issue bond issue issuer can issue the bond or issuers can issue the debenture or issuer can issue commercial paper certificate of deposit lot of instruments are there so issuer is looking from uh, from the equity issue is looking from fund from the market so the issuer can raise money either through equity or the issuer can raise money either through debt if issuer is raising money uh, if issuer is raising money Uh, from the debt instrument, so issuer is requesting anyone and everyone who is interested, they can come and give fund to the issuer, and and for that fund, issuer will give them a constant interest after every regular interval of time till the maturity, and finally on maturity, issuer will give back their money what they have given to them. So the money what the issuer uh, take from the investors, so the money what the issuer takes from the investor, that is called price of the bond. That is called the price of the debt instrument. The the money what the issuer takes from the investor that is called the price of the debt instrument. Okay. Now, uh, now once issuer took this money from the investor, now what what issuer is gonna do? Issuer uh, is gonna give them 
issuer has committed some interest rate. So every debt instrument have a certain interest rate. So issuer will give them coupon. Issuer will give them coupon. Coupon means the interest. Issuer will give them coupon. Coupon means the interest. Issuer will give them coupon or the interest after every regular interval of time to the investors. Okay, so issuer will give you interest or the coupon uh, to, to the investors after every regular interval of time. Okay, and then uh, for, for every definite time period, issuer will give interest or coupon to the investor. And finally, on, and on maturity, what issuer will do? Uh, issuer, whatever money he has taken, that was a price. Now the issuer will pay back the money. That is called as the face value. The issuer will pay back the money to the investor. That is called the face value of the debt instrument. That is called the face value of the debt instrument. Okay. Now understand this part that if 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 the price of the debt instrument, if the price of the debt instrument, if the price of the debt instrument, if the if the price of a debt instrument, if that is more than the if the price of the debt instrument is more than the if the price of the debt instrument is more than the face value of the debt instrument, if the price of the debt instrument is more than the face value of the debt instrument, if the price of the debt instrument is more than the face value of the debt instrument, then then the instrument, then the instrument, then the instrument is issued, then the instrument is issued at premium, then the instrument is issued at premium. If the price of the debt instrument is more than the face value of the debt instrument, then the instrument is issued at premium. While if the while if the price of the debt instrument, while if the price of the debt instrument, while if the price of the debt instrument, if that is less than the face value of the debt instrument, if that is less than the face value of the debt instrument that is less than the face value of the debt instrument, then the instrument is issued at discount. Then the instrument is issued at discount. You understand this part? While while if the while if the price of debt instrument, while if the price of debt instrument, if that is equal to the if the price of the debt instrument, if that is equal to the face value of the debt instrument while if the price of debt instrument is equal to the face value of the debt instrument then the instrument is issued at par then the instrument is issued at par then the instrument is issued at par so remember these terms uh, this is important term. Remember this. So normally, normally, uh, whenever we talk about equity instrument, uh, in the case of equity instrument, equity instruments are always issued at premium. Normally, when we talk about equity instrument, they are always issued at premium because. Uh, if you notice the, the the IPO information of any company, the face value of the share of the company is always given as 10 rupees, while the shares would be issued at, at 100 rupees, 500 rupees, 800 rupees. So for the equity instrument, for the equity instrument, their price is always more than the their face value. So because for the equity instrument, their price is more than the face value. So you can understand equity instrument is always issued at premium. While in the case of debt instrument, uh, it depends upon market demand and supply. So certain times they issued at premium, certain times they are issued at discount also. Okay, so understand that part. Okay, I hope you are understanding this. Okay, you, you are getting the logic. Whenever you get the question, how to understand this part. Anyone, any doubt? Anyone, any doubt? So now if you talk about this question, like, so the cost of debt yield till maturity. So 
the, that is called that is eight percent. Then uh, the coupon rate is seven percent. Is thousand rupees. Time is five year. The price, if I want to know, so I always remember. Yesterday also I told you that whenever you talk about coupon, coupon is always when you talk about coupon, coupon is always calculated. Coupon is always calculated on face value. Remember this when you talk about coupon. Coupon is always calculated on the face value. So here the coupon percentage is seven percent. So what is the value of coupon? So the coupon value would be seven percent of thousand. So the coupon value would be seventy rupees. The coupon is always calculated on face value. So the coupon here this would be seventy rupees. Okay. So so the life ah uh, you can see this. Uh, here, uh, the time period of the debt instrument is five year. The time period of the debt instrument is five year. The time period of the this debt instrument is five year. So you can see this. The time period of this debt instrument is five year. So what happens for this five year? For for this five year, uh, this debt. If you have done investment. Uh, in this debt instrument, imagine if you have done investment in this debt instrument, what future value it will give you? What future value you will get? You it will give you so it will give you either coupon or or it will give you the face value. The face value that it will give you on maturity only. So till till maturity it will give you coupon. Coupon is how much? Seventy rupees is the coupon. Seventy rupees. Is the coupon what it will give you? So, so you can understand they are non-amortizing debt instrument. You can understand they are non-amortizing debt instrument. So, what is coupon? Coupon is the interest. So, till the maturity, you can see that till the maturity. Uh, so, what they are giving you? They are they are they are only giving you the coupon. So, so they, they, that's why I call them as non-amortizing debt instruments because uh, till the maturity, they don't give you anything. They only give you the coupon. They will only give you the interest on maturity. What you will get, you will get the face value. Face value is normally thousand rupees only. Now face value is normally we quote face value as the thousand rupees only. So face value normally we quote as the thousand rupees only. Okay. So the face value we normally quote as the thousand rupees. Face value we normally quote as the thousand rupees only. So, so you understand then a uh, coupon face value, coupon plus face value. Then uh, there is something called YTM. YTM means ill till maturity. YTM means ill uh, till maturity. Ill till maturity. Ill till maturity basically means that if you hold the debt instrument till its maturity, okay. Uh, yield till maturity. Yield means return. When you talk about yield, when you talk about yield, what is yield? Yield means return. Yield means return. Yield means return. So, what do you mean by yield? YTM. YTM means that if if I hold the debt instrument, if I hold the debt instrument till its maturity, if I hold the debt instrument uh, till its maturity. If I hold the debt instrument till its maturity, okay. So then, then all the coupons, then all the coupons, then all the coupons. What I'll receive, then all the coupons. What I will receive, all the coupons. What I'll receive, I'll reinvest those coupons. I will reinvest. I'll reinvest those coupons. I'll reinvest those coupons. I'll reinvest those coupons uh, at at certain at certain fixed interest rate at certain fixed interest rate. Okay, so what is the the, the so so then uh, so if I hold the debt instrument till maturity and whatever the coupon I'll receive, I'll reinvest all the coupon at certain the at certain fixed interest rate. So so at the end so at the end so at the end. So at the end, the minimum return. Then, then at the end, the minimum return, the minimum return which I get, which I get on my investment, is the YTM. Is 
is the y team is the y team till maturity so one year this question is being asked also in exam what is y team i if i if i don't know where i saw that question somewhere in the question paper i saw define what what is y team in some question paper it was there uh, define what is y team in some question paper i saw uh, what is y team you can see this two mark question it came in the exam to define by team so so you need to understand so what is y team so yield y yield means return yield till maturity means that you the what is the minimum if y team is nothing but it is irr to so understand you you have studied irr no npv iir arr mirr everything you studied no in last semester So in transfer minimum, so YTM is nothing but it is IIR internal rate of return. So the minimum return what you get that we call as YTM. Okay, so, so if you get, you can write definition on that. So here the YTM is given to you. Here the YTM is given to you. How much is the YTM? Eight percent. Here the YTM is given to you. Eight percent. So the YTM is given to you. Eight percent. Given to you eight percent. Y team is given to you eight percent. The Y team is given to you eight percent. So, uh, what you can do, you can find the present value of the of the cash flow. You can find the present value of the cash flow. So, so you can find. Seventy rupees. What is the present value of the seventy rupees? So seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power one. Okay. Then you can find seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power two. Then you can find seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power three. Then you can find seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power four. Then you can find seventy divided by. So finally, I can I can take seventy divided by. I can take thousand seventy. Together, I can do them. Thousand plus seventy. Thousand seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power five. I can do that, and I can I can find the values. So that we, that is what I call that as a YTM. So seventy divided by one plus eight percent. Seventy divided by one plus eight percent. What is the eight percent? So this is seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power one. Seventy divided by one plus eight percent. That is sixty-four point eight one four eight. That is sixty-four point sixty-four. That is sixty-four point eight one four eight. Sixty-four point eight one four eight. That is sixty-four point sixty-four point. That is sixty-four point. This is sixty-four. That is sixty-four point. Sixty-four point eight one four eight. That is eight one four eight. Then again, seventy divided by one plus eight percent to the power two. If I do that, seventy divided by use calculator one plus eight percent to the power two. Sixty point zero one three seven. Sixty point zero. One three seven sixty point zero one three seven. Then I can do each year. Then for three year I can find. Hmm. Then for three year I I can find. Hmm. Then for third year if I find that would be fifty five point five six fifty five point five six eight three fifty five point fifty five point five six one three. Five six eight. Fifty six. Fifty five point 
five six eight three. Then 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 uh, seventy divided by one point zero eight to the power four. Fifty one point four fifty one. Fifty one point four five two one. Fifty one point four five two one. Then last year, and for last year, one thousand seventy. One thousand seventy divided by one one point zero eight one plus eight percent to the power five. That is seven twenty eight point two two eight. Seven twenty eight point two two eight. Seven twenty eight. Seven twenty eight point two two four two two four. Now what I'll do? I'll do do the sum of this. Now I'll do the sum of all this. So do the sum of all this. Nine sixty point zero seven. Nine sixty point zero seven. So nine sixty. You should do the sum of all. You get nine sixty point zero seven three. Nine sixty point zero seven. Okay, everyone, do the sum of all. Do the sum of. Any doubt, anyone? Anyone any doubt? <laughs> so now this what you get the sum. Now what you get the sum as the present value of the cash flow. So this is called the price of the debt instrument. Okay. So the sum what we got. So the sum the sum total sum total of of the present value sum total of the present value. Of the cash inflow, some total of the present value of cash inflows. So here the cash inflow is there in the form coupon. So your cash inflows is there in the form of coupon plus the face plus face value. So the sum total of the present value of the cash inflow, what you have received, what you have received. Have received what you have received. So the sum total of the present value of the cash flow, what you have received is called the is called the price of the debt instrument. Is called the price of the debt instrument. Is called the price of the debt instrument. So the sum total of the present value of the cash inflows, what you receive in the form of coupon plus face value. That is that we called as the price of the debt instrument. Understand this part, okay? So here the the what we have received, so this all what we have received. So we call them as the price of the debt instrument, okay? So so you if you want to find the price of the debt instrument, so the so the formula if you want to work on the pricing, if you want to work on price of the debt instrument, so the price of a A debt instrument that is equal to that is equal to the coupon divided by one plus YTM to the power one plus coupon divided by one plus YTM to the power two plus like that every year you have to do plus the coupon divided by one plus YTM to the power three like this will do for every year. Till the maturity, coupon divided by one plus YTM to till the year end, plus the face value or redemption value, anything, 
whatever is the redemption value, it can be equal to face value. Depends on market demand and supply. Plus redemption value divided by one plus y t m to the power n. So this is the this sum total of all the cash inflows what you are receiving. Sum total of all the cash inflows what you are receiving. We call them as the price of the debt instrument. Okay, so so this is this is what we call as the price of the debt instrument. Okay, so other way to write them is the of the debt instrument. Other way we can write them as the price of the debt instrument is equal to coupon. So you can say coupon divided by one plus y t m. To the power i, so i stand from one to n, whatever maturity plus the face value divided by one plus y t m to the power n. So you can write like this. So this is the formula for the price of the debt instrument. You can for these uh, for this which are the cash inflows for this which are the cash inflows. This they are the flow. So you can apply the present value of NUT formula. If you apply the present value of NUT formula on them, so what is the present value of NUT formula? Present value of NUT formula if you apply on them. So because they are they are in the form of NUT. NUT means when you receive or when you pay a, a certain sum of money after every regular interval of time, that is called NUT. If you apply the present value of NUT, E divided by R percent. Into one plus r percent to the power t minus one divided by one plus r percent to the power t. If you apply the present value of NUT here, so you can write the price of the debt instrument. So the price of the debt instrument. So you can write then the price of the debt instrument is equal to. You can write that the price of the debt instrument is equal to coupon. Uh, divide by y t m coupon divide by y t m into one plus y t m to the power t minus one divide by one plus y t m to the power t plus face value plus uh, face value plus face value plus face value divide by one plus y t m to the power t. And use this this formula for the price of the debt instrument. Okay, so the current problem also which we solve, the current problem also which we solve. So you can instead of instead of doing this, instead of doing this, so you could have get the same answer by by just putting this formula. So you just need to put this formula. So the price is equal to coupon was seventy, YTM was eight percent into one plus eight percent. To the power how much five years now? To the power five minus one divided by one plus eight percent to the power five plus face value was thousand divided by one plus eight percent to the power five. That give you the price of the debt instrument. Price is equal to seventy divided by point zero eight. This is one point zero eight to the power minus one. Divide by one point zero eight to the power five plus thousand divided by one point zero eight to the power five. If you use if you know how to use NUT table, you can do that. Otherwise, I'll tell you what is the value of one point zero eight to the power five. One point. What is the value of one point zero eight to the power five? So the value is one point four six nine three three. Remember that. So what is the value? One point zero eight to the power five value is one point four six one point four six nine double three. One point four six nine double three. So if you put it here, if you put it here, seventy. What is seventy divided by point zero eight? Seventy divided by point zero eight. So that is eight seventy five. That is eight seventy five. Eight seventy five. This is one point four six nine double three minus one.
divide by 1.4693 plus 1000 divide by 1.4693. So you can find the price. You can find the price. Price is 875 into uh, 0.4693. Divide by 1.46933 plus 1000 divided by 1.46933. So 1000 divided by 1000 divided by this 680.583. With this, you'll get the price. <coughs> You get the price. Price is 875 into 875 into this minus one divided by this. That is 279. That is 279.49 plus 680. You get the price. Price, you do the sum. 960.07. The so same answer, what you got here. Same answer, what you got here. 960.073. Same answer you get. Any doubt, anyone? Anyone any doubt? Anyone any doubt? Any question you want to ask anyone? 